All right, we back, we back, we back. I'm like James Brown. I feel good, da -da 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 -da, like I knew that I would. Da -da 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 -da. So good, da -da 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 -da, like I knew that I would. Da -da 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 -da. So good, da -da, so good. I said to you, da -da -da -da. ow! <laughs> Whoa. I don't want to keep you long. I just want to. Make a few points and get out of here. I didn't realize we were so busy today. I played uh, a lot of a classic video. We went live. Also, there was a premiere that was played. I didn't know that another video was playing. <laughs> very busy channel today. I'm very sure we're going to get our 10 views today. <laughs> no doubt about it. Okay. Today is Father's Day. Tomorrow is June 10th holiday celebration. I just wanted to recognize June 10th for those who understand it's important. They they like to talk negative about things or whatever. We don't know how to take the things that we have and use them for our benefit. There was a show called MacGyver. They did a remake, but there was a show called MacGyver. And MacGyver could take, just be in a room and take all kinds of a little bit of this and a little bit of that and make it work for whatever purpose he wanted to use it. We don't know how to do that. We would just be helpless. This, the MacGyver mindset is what you have to have when you are in a survival situation. You in a plane crash, you have to learn how to survive. You have to be creative. You have to learn how to do some things. Many of us, if they dropped us off into a forest, into a jungle, we're dead meat, period. We wouldn't last no time. We have no idea how to survive because there's no citra air in the jungle. There's no citra heat in the jungle. There's no McDonald's. There, there's holistic medicine in the jungle if you know what to look for. If we don't take things as it is, we don't know how to grab, take advantage of what we got. As a truck driver, you take things with you, but you you limited in what you can take. It's a truck. There ain't a whole lot you can take on your truck. You get in certain situations, you're going to have to learn how to take something that wasn't meant for that purpose and make it meant for the purpose. You got to be creative. The black man and woman in America, the leadership, the mindset that they have, and you're not in a position to take it to the enemy, take it to the oppressor. You are not in that situation. We are not in a situation well, we have a military, we, we have bombs, and we have tanks. and We're not in a position like that. So I don't know why they have the, the mindset because all it's going to ever be is talk. You're not going to take nothing nowhere. Plus, you're too scary anyway. The reality is you're too damn scared. You wouldn't, even if you had planes, even if you had tanks, you wouldn't do nothing. So sit your scary ass down. We know these people are nothing but talking. Then when they hype you up, how we going to fight, then they want to talk about, will you donate to my cash app? So they can ride around in a limousine in the system that you're supposed to be fighting against. It makes no sense, people. 
But Tariq Nasheed do it. The dominant society. The dominant society. And you living in a mansion. You're doing pretty well off the poor in the dominant society. Louis Farrakhan lived good off the poor in the dominant society. The society that's supposed to be destroyed they driving fancy cars, wearing $600 shoes, $1,000 suits. America's going to be destroyed. Well, I guess you're going to live good until it's destroyed because you're not helping destroy it. You're taking advantage. You are investing in what you claim is supposed to be destroyed. I ain't never been around so many phonies. Today is Father's Day. And right before this broadcast, we was live and we had a guest. And we do give him his, his props that he did be true to his word, even though he still was foul. He was foul because you don't come to nobody's program for 15 minutes. I only got 15 minutes. You didn't tell me 15 minutes because I would have told you don't waste your time. Then you don't even have nothing to say. I don't know what to say. What you come here for? It makes no... It, folks get so emotional, but you don't... You're not talented enough. You're not skillful enough to explain what you're talking about. Plus, you don't have the evidence. You don't have the evidence. You can present different things, but just because you get a document, don't make it evidence to prove anything. Don't y'all watch court TV? Judge Judy? Just because you, you think you have some evidence don't mean it's gonna, it gonna mean anything. So what? You got a document. So what? It's evidence, but do it prove what you're talking about? That's the key. But we will welcome him, and I hope that he does straighten himself out. Get over the being nervous. Get your notes together. Get your evidence together. And you can come back here and I will be quiet. I have no problems shutting my mouth. I want to be taught. Teach me. Because we are about the truth. I don't want to be out here telling lies. You want to call people a liar. But you can't prove the lie. If I'm a liar, sir. Then give me a polygraph test. I can be in error. There's a difference between being in error and a lie. A lie is being deceitful. An error is making a mistake. I thought, but it, it wasn't. But when you lie, that's to deceive. Usually for a benefit. Now, some people lie just for the hell of it. But usually when you lie, there's a benefit, there's a reward behind the lie. Even if it's just trying to save your ass from going to jail. This is Father's Day. Now in our conversation with this young man, because he seems like he's a young man, I would, I would guess I would guess he would probably be uh, late 20s, early 30s. I say late 20s, early 30s, somewhere in there. But clearly he's a young, young guy. And clearly he does not know nothing about being in the nation of Islam. He really don't know. He really don't know. He's been listening to Dr. Wesley Muhammad. It don't even sound like he go to the, to the mosque, to his local mosque or, or anything. He just liked to hear Minister Farrakhan teach. Teach, brother. And you know, you clap your hands, blah, blah, blah. 
And that's beautiful. When you at the mosque, that's beautiful when you at the study group. But when we, we come out in the real world, it's a whole different ball game. I've been in the real world for 15 years. The realities took on earth internet ministry. I've been dealing with these people for 15 years in the real world. Because some will like you and some will have a, a big problem with the things that you say, like you do. And when you come out in the real world, in the public, you're going to have to be able to deal with it. Otherwise, you need to shut up and let Dr. Wesley, Farrakhan, and whoever, let them deal with it. You need to be quiet because you come out here on public like this and you make them and yourself look real bad because you don't know you know what you want to say but you don't know how to express yourself that's the problem and if your information is weak it gets worse but this young man said something that should be troubling to all of us I asked him the question because Elijah Muhammad was in his 60s or late 50s, however. And he was having relations, not with his wife, with these young women. It makes no difference if they was underage. Now, if they was underage, that makes things worse. That makes him a pedophile. But even if they was in their 20s, 21, you 60 some years old, sir. What is the reason behind you wanting these young women? Father's Day. <laughs> Father's Day. These young women didn't have a father to protect them. And this young man who has no children, Lord, Lord, I hope he don't have no children because daughter, your daddy would give you to a grimy old geezer, <laughs> a sick old geezer because he's the man of God. <laughs> so if you out there in the universe, young lady, don't come here because your daddy would give you to the man of God. <laughs> An old geezer. A married old geezer with grown children who have children old as you are. Your father is sick. We should find this troubling. But when your mind is brainwashed with religious and even spiritual beliefs. It causes us not to think properly because as a father, you should want to protect your daughter. And when a man, I don't give a damn who he is, especially an old man, You should protect your daughter from these wolves, these parasites. Now, why would some of us, we expect father is in the house because we know back in the day, remember back in the day, a lot of times, I know when myself and Terry, when we was growing up, if I wanted to date Terry, when we was teenagers, I have to go meet her father. I have to go meet the family, but really it's, it's daddy that you worried about because daddy is the man of the house. Daddy run things and that's his daughter. So Terry take me home and we look at each other. Well, here we go. 
how you doing, Mr. Ellis? You know how some of these, these fathers be doing. They don't care about what they did when they was young men. You ain't doing my daughter like that. What you want, son? I, 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 <laughs> I just, I, I, I like your daughter. I just thought we could hang out and hang out and do what? Uh, uh, we, we just go into the mall and, and go to a movie uh, in the dark. Uh, well, we're going to sit like where there's more lighting, sir. Uh, back in the day, there used to be a chaperone. I couldn't be with Terry by myself. I would take Terry to the movies and somebody gonna be sitting between me and Terry. I sure enjoy this movie, how about y'all? Yeah, we enjoy the movie too. Yeah, this is a good movie. <laughs> what, a, what a butter. <laughs> Girl, eat some of this popcorn. <laughs> That's the way it was. Fathers look out for their daughter, their son. But you know, you. There was a show called Good Times. Look how James Evans, how he acted when it came to film. He loved JJ. He loved Michael. But that's my little baby. That's my baby girl. Thelma. Whoa. He had a. Big attitude when it came to film. And even in real life, James Amos saw Thelma Bernadette Stannis as his, like a daughter. And they still have a good relationship. That's the way it is when you are father and when you are a man. And the teachers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches protect the black woman. Period. What is your purpose, Elijah Muhammad? To sleep with these young girls, young women. What is the purpose? And you deny them an opportunity to be a young lady. As soon as the a, a, a young girl come out the womb. These bastards want to jump between the girl's legs. What the hell wrong with y'all? What is wrong with these crazy ass men? The prophet Muhammad getting married to a, a baby six years old. What is the purpose of that, y'all? That's some, that's some sick crap. And even boys, you have plenty of time in your life to screw. Plenty of time. Give these children an opportunity to live their life, to have fun, no responsibilities. Live a little bit. Because once you become an adult, once you become, once you start spitting out babies, you're an adult forever. And you spend our babies, you responsible for those children. What kind of father are we to deny our children to be children? We encouraging young boys. Damn, that gal over there show sure look good, bro. You need to get some of that. We encouraging young boys to be whores. And if the young boy is a whore, he got to be messing with somebody. So you don't give a damn about somebody else's daughter being messed up. So in a hurry to jump in the sack. You ain't missing nothing. The sex crap is overrated. It ain't about nothing. Dogs do it. Ants 
snakes do it. Frogs do it. So do lions do it. Who gives them? It ain't nothing. It don't take education to do it. If you had to get a college degree to screw, many of y'all would have no babies. Dumbass. But it's easy to do. Don't take nothing. And you can't handle your emotion. You think you, you're looking for the pleasure, but it's more than pleasure connected to it. Emotions and feelings get involved. Who knows how many people commit suicide every year because somebody played a game with them. I just want your vagina. I just want your penis. And you thought they was in love with you. They just wanted your body. I've heard a story where people have committed suicide. And then we shoot and kill each other and stalk and harass because you sleeping with somebody and you thought they liked you. And you stalking and harassing them. They don't want you. They just want your body and your money. Let these children be children. In religion, I can say I was blessed. I really truly enjoy my childhood. I'm blessed. I was not in a hurry to be grown. I was smart enough to look at the adults and I knew I don't want nothing to do with that. I get that whatever. I want to enjoy my childhood. But in religion, they can't wait till a baby, a girl, baby girl, and probably boys too, because you know they molested children in the houses of religion. So you're not safe whether you're a boy or a girl, these pedophiles in religion. And you got these suckers like this young man going to defend people behavior like that because he's sick influenced by religious demonic as you would say these bastards 20 some years old you're an old man you don't live your life you messing up a young girl now she's spitting out babies 15, 16, or 21, or whatever, you, she should be trying to enjoy her life. The only thing she's doing is laying, spreading her legs for your old ass. So where's father to protect? The, it's so sickening. Religion and even spirituality can destroy and break down the fiber in you as a man to protect your own child. Because that's because he's a man of God. Wow. So the young man said he wouldn't do it, but if you would give your daughter to the man of God, you would give your wife. Also, because he's a man of God, if the man of God told you, damn boy, you sure looking fat back there. Why don't you, why don't you bend over a little bit? I want to give you some of the man of God. <laughs> you would bend over because that's the man of God if you would give your child if you would give your wife you got you, you, you would give that man your booty and don't think it don't happen 
because these men of God is freaky. Oh yeah, they some freaks. Parental discretion is advised right here, y'all. Just want to use an example. I'm, I'm not going to be nasty. There's another cult leader. What's his name? Uh, Nature Boy, they call him. I don't hear too much about Nature Boy nowadays. I, I, and I'm not looking for him either. So, But Nature Boy was telling his followers, if you want part of the divine, if you suck his penis, you can get drink some of the divine. Well, of course, he's the man of God. And you want some of that divineness because you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing but a slave. You are nobody. So why not take a drink of the man divine, the, the, the man of God? And this young man proud to say that. He's proud to say, well, he's the, he's the man of God. He want my daughter. No father instinct to protect your child. And in these religious cults, the leaders take your daughter, they take your son, they take your wife, they will take you. These cult leaders are freaking sick ass people. There's a cable channel and there's a series where, where ex cult members talk about what the leaders made them do. It's, it's sickening. The man of God. If I ever come at any of y'all that kind of way, put a bullet in my brain. Because I'm sick. I need to be dead. Let these children be children. What's the rush to have sex and spit out babies? What's the damn rush? Why are you in a hurry? That's just more responsibility. More miles to feed. What's the rush? They do that because that's how they keep you under control. That's how that's how they know that they have your loyalty. And you are nobody. You want to get close to God. Willing to do anything. You read the same book. That they do. Why don't you do that sometime? You sitting back. Brother, that's deep. How come it is not deep when you read it? Y'all reading the same crap. It's the same stuff. How is when he said, wow, Brother Farrakhan, that's deep. You read the same damn thing, word for word. But no matter how many times you read it, it's, it's never deep. But when Farrakhan or the man of God said, damn. Brother, that's deep. Snubbing up, you need to stop being a hater. Brother, that's, that's deep. And we don't believe we sick. You're sick. That young man's sick. Stumbling all over his words because his brain is telling him that what we're talking about, what I'm bringing to you is, is right. He's trying in his mind to try to justify wrong. So he's there stumbling all over himself. 
hiding away from the camera. If you didn't want the camera to see you, what the hell are you turn it on for? It, it goes to show you how crazy we are. You don't have to turn, hide behind the camera. Don't turn it on, sir. Father's Day. Where are the fathers? Because a father is supposed to protect your family. And the fathers of a nation are supposed to protect that nation. Protect your resources. And the number one resource is your women, is your children. That's the number one resource. I don't care how much gold you have, how much water, platinum, all these other material things. That don't mean nothing if you don't protect the number one resource, which is people, which is your women and your children. And even other men, it don't mean nothing. So we can't even secure our women and children from the predators among ourselves, least any kind of water or gold or silver. We can't even protect the number one resource which is ourselves because we have no father we have people with a penis that want to be a slave master they don't want to be father somebody should have asked elijah muhammad but they, but see the zombies cult members accept the explanation well god a lot told me to get with these young women because I need to put my seed in uh, fertile soil. That's the explanation. This is 2023. You put your seed in fertile soil. What the hell? For what? What is it supposed to do? The only reason why anybody talking about Elijah Muhammad is because of Louis Farrakhan. None of the seeds is talking about him. You have this little little guy, Ishmael Muhammad, who Farrakhan punk. If it wasn't for Farrakhan, nobody be listening to him. They don't listen to him. Even though Farrakhan pump him up, they don't like him like that. Go on YouTube. How many Ishmael Muhammad videos that they put up on YouTube? They don't care nothing about him. They don't care because he's the son of Elijah Muhammad. It's a personality cult. And even he praised Farrakhan. Oh, the honorable minister do his Farrakhan and the honorable minister do his Farrakhan. It's a personality cult. And Farrakhan has kicked out everybody that could really be in leadership position because it's all about him. He don't care if it die as long as his family is taken care of. He don't care. And it's going to die. When Farrakhan dies, that's good. That's it's all to be over with. Nobody has the personality to keep that going. Nuri Muhammad sort of looked like Farrakhan physically. He don't have the he don't have the personality. Wesley Muhammad don't have the personality. Ishmael, nobody. The only one who had the charisma, the only one who actually had the who had the knowledge that could really do it was Khalid Muhammad. And you see what happened with that. Father. We don't have no fathers. We've never had a father since coming off the slave plantation. 
Just because you free don't make you a father. You was a slave coming off the slave plantation and now you are an ex-slave. There was no father on the slave plantation except the masa. And when you came off the slave plantation, you didn't become no father. You was an ex-slave. Then they call you a freedman. You were just free physically, but you still are an ex-slave. Your idea of father is copying your slave master. He's the only example you you have a father. And what we're taught in the Bible. And so we copy that. And copying that cause conflict with the sisters because you copying the white man, you copying the oppressor, you copying the hate of women in the Bible. There's a problem. And now you become an oppressor. Now the black woman, not only do she have to fight the man, which is the white man, the oppressor, she got to fight her husband and uncles and sons because they've been made sick with woman-hating religion. They've been made sick with a woman-hating society because they, these men in this country don't like women. Next to the slave, the white woman was treated worse. She was married to a peck of wood and she knew her husband was out there messing with the female slave and a damn thing she could do about it. She can't even, a lot of white women couldn't even own property. She had to fight for her own rights. But of course, her mind is filled, filled with racism too. So she don't see that it's wrong or there's a problem with the discrimination of black people as long as you don't mess with me. Some of them think that way. I just want my rights as a woman. I don't care about them Negroes. Because this man is not a father. He's sick. What man wants to see his woman being a stripper? A porn star? Getting some mud and put on a t-shirt and you want to see women wrestling in the mud? What man in his... Woo! What man want to see his daughters? What man want to put their daughter and their wives on a runway with a piece of string in their behind going up and down the runway? What kind of men are you? Low quality men. Yeah. I say you are not a father. You want to get angry. I'm a father. Uh, we men. Okay. You low quality. You low quality fathers. You low quality men. How can you be a man and we sit back in the cut and watch women be a prostitute and a stripper? Our mothers our daughters, our aunts. And you don't have to be related to them. These are our sisters. These are our family. This is our tribe. Your daughter is my daughter. Your son is my son. It takes a village, you African, talking all this African stuff. It takes a village to raise a child. Well, your child is doing porn. Your child is a drug addict. Your child is involved in criminal activity. 
Where are you, village? Because there's no fathers to organize and become an army, we're not going to have it. It's simple as that. There's no fathers. Sperm donors, daddies, there's no fathers. There's no warriors. There's no gods. There's a bunch of feral slaves that just came off the slave plantation trying to be like white people. That's the reality. I could be wrong. Don't let me get all hyped up. Don't let me go to a place and y'all know I'm wrong. In the chat room, I'm, if I'm wrong, brother, I, I took it too far. Let me know. And I want you to explain to, to, to me and make my make my dumb ass understand that I, I'm, I'm, I'm going, that's, that's, that's the wrong way to look at things, brother. Don't fumble your damn words. Bring it straight. Explain it to me. I understand English real well. You show me how this type of behavior is that of a father. Not only a black man, but of, of any man. These men around the world have women doing some trifling things. They're nothing but animals to play with. They find women's bodies all over the land. They throw them away like trash. Oh, well, I use her. They always find the women's bodies somewhere. Murder. The favorite victim of a serial killer is women. And a lot of times it's because these men hate women. That's the reason why. They hate women. These men have been conditioned to be that way. Women are nothing but tools for men. How dare if I want you woman you better come to me. In some countries, they will kill a woman if she don't submit. So you lucky in America, but you could be found dead on the side of a highway. Some man have murdered you. There's a lot of missing black women in this country. A lot. Where's the father? Where's the men? Because she has no protection. So you will find her body up and down the roads and the alleyways of America because this poor black woman, this poor black woman has no father. She has no man. That's why. We are failures as a male gender. And we so pathetic and weak, then we blame her for our weakness. Whatever complaint you have about her, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself because whatever condition she in is because of her man is not protecting her. Is not providing. So another man would do it. So y'all get angry at Serena Williams. Oh, she married a white boy. She got a half, half biracial baby. Where the hell we at? The few black men that Serena messed with, they screwed her over. Cause she don't mean nothing to them. She's just a hoe. A million dollar hoe. I got money. You got money. You ain't never a hoe to me. It's our fault. 
We treat our women like trash. Like toilet paper. And we take our frustrations out on our women and our children and our dog Scruffy because we're not mad enough to challenge the powers that be. Like Tariq Nasheed said, the dominant society. Well, if they're, if they're the dominant society, who are you, sir? That means you are their inferior, sir. So what you gonna do about it? Absolutely nothing. Will you donate to my cash out so me and my biracial wife can go to Jamaica so she can wear a piece of string between her butt cheeks and walk up and down the beach? Black power family. <laughs> Woo, man. I'm looking for a man. What? Uh oh. You looking for a man? I said, I'm looking for a man. Ever since I was a little boy. I was looking for a man. I was raised up in a house full of women. The only male. And sometimes my daddy would be there. Sometimes he would be there. He disappeared for days or whatever. And my grandfather was there and my uncles or whatever. There was men around me. I was looking for a man. I saw my daddy as a little boy. I'm a little boy. And I know I'm supposed to grow up to be a man. That's what I was told. Okay, I'm going to be a man. I looked at my father. I looked at my daddy, my, my father. I didn't see a man in him. I looked at my grandfather. I looked at my uncles. I looked at my cousins. I looked at the people generally, the, the men around me, period. And I'm like, I don't want to be like them. I'm a, little, a scary little boy. But I don't want to be like them. I didn't feel the sense. I didn't feel strength from them. I didn't feel protection from them. None of them. The first time I felt as though I was being attracted to a man was when I heard the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. That was the first time. I never saw Elijah Muhammad. I only heard I didn't even hear his voice. He was just a person in a book. But he was talking some things. He was teaching me things like a father's supposed to do. I was learning things in the books. And what I loved about the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, and that's why I talk the way that I talk. If I want to use big words, I know how to go to the dictionary or whatever. I know how to look up fancy words and, and, and whatever. I love the teachings of Elijah Muhammad because you could be a child and you could understand what he was talking about in those books. So I'm with a man that took the time to teach me. And the information at that time let me reiterate, please. The information at that time was incredible. I was a little boy, but because of the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, I was able to have decent conversations with adults. And adults was listening to me. 
And all I would I was doing was basically was regurgitating like what you see on YouTube and what you see on Facebook. These young people regurgitate. They don't know what the hell they talking about. Not really. They just memorize and regurgitate the, the Bible, message to the black man or whatever. They just regurgitate. And it sounds good to adults. That boy is so smart. Where you learn that from, little boy? He's smart. Mellow. Ain't, ain't that boy smart? He, that's a smart boy. That, all praise is due to Allah. For the honorable Elijah Muhammad. I am what I am because I was influenced by Nation of Islam teaching at a young age. And I always wanted to be part of the Nation of Islam. I wasn't in the position. But my relative kept sending me the newspaper, my relatives sent me the books. They even sent me information on things you had to be an actual member of the nation in order to get. They were sending me those things too because they could see I was drawn and attracted. I wanted to be part of the nation of Islam. When I talk about the nation of Islam, There are those who don't like certain things because it sounds negative. This is what Elijah Muhammad taught me. Elijah Muhammad taught me, stand on the truth no matter what. Does that mean if Elijah Muhammad is in error, he gets a pass. That's not the way I take it. Stand on the truth no matter what. Nobody gets a pass. And when you come out in the public, anybody can judge you. Nobody don't have to like Angel Snuff Nuff Seven. We know this. <laughs> we know this. Donald Trump ain't getting a pass. Joe Biden is not getting a pass. There's people that want to bring Joe Biden down. There's people that want to bring Donald Trump. What make Louis Farrakhan or the people you like, what make you think that for some reason, Nobody, people, everybody's supposed to like them. That's not how it works. Plus, Louis Farrakhan is foul. He's done some foul things. That's why many of these people, he's not teaching the original teachings of Elijah Muhammad. He said it out of his own mouth, the swan song. He said he revised, he changed things. These people don't even listen to the speeches. The only thing they come and clap. They don't even listen to what, what Farrakhan is talking about. They just come there to clap. That's one. I remember one time Minister Farrakhan was, was teaching and he stopped and asked the audience, what did I just say? They didn't even know what the man just said. They just there. Go ahead, brother minister. Allah Akbar, they just clapping. And Mr. Farrakhan got on that case. Damn, y'all, you're not even listening to what I'm saying. But see, they caught up in the personality. It don't make no difference what he said or what he's not saying. This man kissed another man in the mouth in the public and they let him get away with it. Go watch the video. It's on YouTube, I still, I think. 
And then Farrakhan played it off. He said, it's all right uh, for me to kiss my brother, talking about the white guy. And uh, <laughs> there's nothing gay about it. <laughs> now, usually when Farrakhan talk, they get... They give a whole lot of claps. When he kissed that man in the mouth, they clapped. It was weak. They was like, yeah, minister. Yeah. You know that's wrong. You know something is, that's, that's, that's bizarre. Like, what the hell are you doing, sir? But they so wrapped up. It's a cult behavior. The leader can do no wrong. That's why I know with the mindset of that young man, if the man of God told him, hey, young buck, uh, God said, <laughs> give up the booty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> he would do it because that's the man of God. This is how sick we are. There are people missing because they are they are being used for human sacrifice because the leader wants to show God how much they love the God. They want to get closer to God. And so we need to find a victim and they're going to cut out the heart and raise it to give it to this God. It's, go, it's still going on. People are missing. And sometimes when they find them, they're missing body parts. It's not always organ trafficking. It's human sacrifice. Of which the nation of Islam, when Master Farah Muhammad was, he was teaching human sacrifice. That's why he got in trouble in, in Detroit. And that's why he left Detroit. Because one of the followers... Carried, carried it out. Robert Harris, I believe. It's part, it was part of the teaching. Human sacrifice. Where is the father to protect us from evil? Because clearly, clearly the father art out in heaven is doing a pitiful job. So where is the flesh and blood fathers to protect us from these dangers? So I joined Louis Farrakhan. I didn't know who, he, who Louis Farrakhan was. My relatives knew who Farrakhan was. When I first heard Louis Farrakhan, I thought he sounded like a like a woman with a deep voice. That's what he sounded to me. They got totally upset when I said that. I said he sounded like a like a woman with a hard voice. Like Louise Jefferson or somebody. That's how he sounded to me. They got really upset over that because person now, how dare you talk like that about the minister? That's my personal opinion. If I feel as though the man sound like a woman, a hard sounding woman, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. What they got to do with you? Personality worship. Now for me, I'm not a personality worshiper. As long as you talking about Minister Farrakhan, I could care less. Now, when you're talking about putting your hands on somebody, on Minister Farrakhan, when you talk about putting your hands on us, that's a different ball game. I don't care about no talking. I never was a Farrakhan worshiper. I did not. I joined the, the Minister Farrakhan because he said, I'm bringing back the original teachings. And I wanted to help bring back the original teaching. 
I began to see that this man was all out for himself. He's making a shrine. He's making a, he's making his own version of the, uh, the, the trilogy, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's what I saw that he was doing. That's what he has done. Master Farad Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad, and then him. I guess he's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> because Farad Muhammad is the father, Elijah Muhammad is the son, so I guess he would be the, the Holy Ghost. I didn't want nothing to do with that. You a liar. And there are those who did leave. But then there are those who follow the personality. I like him. He's not he's not building the original teaching. That's a, that's all right. I like I like Farrakhan. He he he's on to something. Yeah, your pocketbook. So while y'all getting poor, he's getting richer. I watched him. Go from Goodwill suit. That's what he was wearing. Goodwill suit. Used ass shoes. Broke down cars. I watched him grow from that. Next thing you know, he's in limousines and blah, blah, blah. My condition did not change. My relative's condition didn't change. Those, we got poor. His house got rich. Our community didn't get nothing. We didn't get nothing. We doing all the damn work. And I'm like, oh no. It's not going to happen. I can't do this. No, 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 no. Because I'm not a personality worshiper. If you're producing something, that's different. And I'm benefiting. We getting you getting nothing. These people not getting nothing. And then they want to blame you because you're not a millionaire in the nation of Islam. You're doing something wrong. Minister Farrakhan, these preachers make their money begging, begging the poor. That's how they make their money. They're not creating no business. They don't have no businesses. Elijah Muhammad's son worked a regular job. He refused to take poor people money. I make my own money. That's what Elijah Muhammad's son, Wallace, the hypocrite, that's what he was doing. I make my own money. I don't need no mansion. I got this little house here. I go to work every day. I take care of myself. That's what Elijah Muhammad's son, the hypocrite. But they paying millions of dollars, thousands of dollars a year so Farrakhan can live it up. And he producing nothing. And all this happens because there's no father to protect nobody. I had no father to protect me. My father was drunk somewhere, probably. Who knows? So Farrakhan began to slander hate speech against Malcolm. And he did this for about at least 10 years straight. I know from like 19, the early 1980s into the 90s, he slandered Malcolm X about 10 years. Nobody was thinking about Malcolm X. But Farrakhan, so filled with hatred, and he was still envious of that man, he starts slinging his name out there. Malcolm's family wasn't promoting Malcolm X. None of Malcolm's relatives was promoting Malcolm X. It was Farrakhan. Still jealous, still envious of that man, still full of hate, against a man that's been dead 20 years. What does that 
can't tell you. Can you imagine me still talking 20 years later about somebody I had a beef with 20 years ago I didn't like 20 years ago? The nation of Islam fell. There was no nation of Islam. Between 1976 and like 1979 or whatever, there was no nation of Islam. Nobody was talking about Elijah Muhammad. Nobody was talking about nothing. Farrakhan started doing that. Then he started talking about Malcolm. Nobody was talking about Malcolm X. The reason why y'all talking about Malcolm X is because of what Farrakhan tried to do. Farrakhan tried to destroy his legacy. And it backfired. That's what happened. I know I saw it with my own eyes. I lived it. You don't have to tell me nothing. I didn't even know who Malcolm X was until Farrakhan stopped talking about him. I'm like, who is Malcolm X? I didn't even know who he was. My relatives never told me about this guy because I was too young to know about Malcolm X. I was, I was what? I was two years old when Malcolm was assassinated. I ain't known about no Malcolm X. And nobody told me about Malcolm X. So I heard the story of Malcolm X. And I don't take nothing people say on face value. I examined and researched the story myself. And my conclusion was what the Nation of Islam did to that man was wrong. And I told them while I was a member under Farrakhan. No, brother. I ain't no brother. You ain't going to tell me how to think. It was wrong how they treated Malcolm X. Why they didn't throw me out? Why they didn't kick me out the nation? Because they still wanted to pimp me for work. Ah, oh, well, let them believe it. He, he's doing the work. Let them believe whatever. I was, I was insubordinate all the time because I'm, I'm not your damn puppet. I'm not a personality worship. I don't give a damn if you kick me out the nation of Islam. It's no benefit. What's the benefit? I came here with nothing. I leave with nothing. So what? The only one who's benefiting is y'all happy ass. Free labor. I might give you a couple of, a few dollars for charity. I'm not getting a benefit. I don't give a damn about getting kicked out. Been doing me a favor. The only reason why I stayed in the nation of Islam as long as I did, because my relatives kept begging me. Oh, give it a chance. Things gonna get better. We just getting started, blah, blah, blah. Father's Day. It was a hurtful thing. When I began to learn about how Malcolm X was treated, because we're supposed to be brothers and sisters. This is what we do to each other. And then you end up killing that man after all what he done for you. And then you celebrated the murder. What kind of Muslims are you? What kind of people are you? So I had to look at Elijah Muhammad in another way. And this is somebody that I, I, I adored. I looked up to Elijah Muhammad. But he taught me, stand on right no matter what. You wrong, Father. And many of you, you've been in that position. And you know your mama is wrong. You know your father is wrong or a cousin is wrong. Some of you, 
will bow down and kiss their ass, and you know they're wrong. But some of us, we catch hell and catch heat because you know that mama wrong, you know that daddy is wrong, your cousin is wrong, your best friend is wrong, and you stand on right. And you're gonna do you're gonna do that regardless of the consequence. They was wrong. And you can flip it and try to justify, and Malcolm did this. This is what they always do. They always blame the victim. Well, Malcolm did this and Malcolm did that. Malcolm did. This man brought the nation of Islam to international prominence. Nobody was listening to Elijah Muhammad like that. And all these people try to copy Malcolm X style. Farrakhan even admit they want to be like Malcolm X. All of these folks, they want to be like Malcolm X. The jealousy and the envy. Elijah Muhammad's own children was jealous of Malcolm X. And the only thing that man wanted to do was serve his nation of Islam and try to help us as a people. That's all he wanted to do. All this other unnecessary baggage. But that's because we don't act like fathers. Because Malcolm should have been protected by fathers. But I'm going to give you my daughter because you're the messenger of God. A village should have been behind Malcolm. But there's a bunch of zombies, these cult members. Because that was wrong. Their behavior was against the nation of Islam teachings. Their behavior was against the teachings of the Quran itself. A double whammy. They was in violation. But our leader can do no wrong. That's the problem. Our leader can't do no wrong. And I will say that your God, Allah, that's why he destroyed your nation of Islam. And took it all away. And Allah is still playing with your happy ass. Because you think that you got it going on. But you know what the Quran said. When Allah is ready to destroy a nation. Allah allows that nation to be prosperous. Prosperous. Doing good and well. Then Allah yanks the tablecloth from the table. That's what's going to happen to you. Because you still, you caught up in slavery. So I want you to be brag about what you got and what you think that you're doing. Because it's all going to fall. It's just a matter of time. Because you're a personality worshiper. And the personality worshiper, days are numbered. Many people his age are leaving. And all of them will be gone in a little while. That was born in the 1930s or whatever. They're leaving little by little. What you going to do when the personality gone? Cry. And go to the liquor store like they did Elijah Muhammad, like that brother said when Elijah Muhammad died. They went to the liquor store. They didn't know what to do. All pitiful and pathetic. Because instead of following the teachings, they was following a man. And instead of acknowledging God, they was acknowledging that man because that God is nowhere to be found. Just like the Christian. They following a man. You're not following no God. You following this man. 
You're not following a God. We asked the brother, how do you know he's a man of God? How do you know that he was taught by God? You can't explain that. Because first you have to prove that this man was God. You can't prove that. You have to prove God exists. You cannot prove that. It's called belief, people. Belief. So you believe this man is a man of God and you would give him your daughter and your wife. You would give him anything he wants because he's a man of God. Because that's what you believe. He's no man of God to me. I never saw Elijah Muhammad as divine, even as a child. I saw him like a grandfather. I just saw Elijah Muhammad as a man that wanted to help black people. I did not see divine. I, I did not worship. I did not pray to, to, to Elijah Muhammad. Or Master. I didn't do that kind of stuff. I saw him like what he is. You are a man like me. You pee pee and you do do and you will die. What's divine about that? It was reported the day before Elijah Muhammad died, he started having hallucinations and he weighed about 98 pounds. And he, he jumped out of the bed, run out the hospital into the rain. They had to go get him. And they said his last words was, Allah, I don't understand. I don't understand Allah. That was his last word. Probably because as you die, you begin to understand it was all a lie. And as the lights, as your life starts leaving your body and your brain starts to shut down, and you can start, you can think just a little bit before you croak. You begin to understand. Now you understand. Damn. It was all a lie. But it's over. Fathers. How wonderful it would be if we had fathers in our life. How wonderful it would be if we had a village of fathers to raise the child, to protect that woman. We don't have nobody. So you can be a father. We're going to say this in my conclusion. So we can, you can be a father. You know what I mean? If you want to call yourself a father, you're not a father to me. You low quality. It's just like when you go to a restaurant and you look at the menu. There's the cheap food, the dollar menu. Then you get you go up to the higher price stuff. When you go to the car lot, here's the used cars. Here's the pre-owned cars. Here's the brand new cars. Here's the luxury cars. You are a used car. And they use your happy ass on the slave plantation for 400 years. You on the bottom. You are a car, but you used. You are not a luxury car. You're not a brand new car. You're not even pre-owned. Your happy ass is used. Thoroughly. This close to the damn junkyard. That's the kind of fathers, if you... If you want to talk about us being fathers, that's the kind of father you are. Uh, like a used car, used bicycle, a used lawnmower. I was getting ready to say something. <laughs> I keep that to myself. <laughs> used toilet paper. <laughs> There's an absence of fathers. So if you can't be a father, it's impossible for you to be 
God. It's impossible for you to be a warrior. How are you going to be a God? How can you be a, a warrior? And you, you, you're not even really a father. Except by default. You are a used car, sir. But let me tell you something. And people always talk about, that's negative. No, that's the truth. If you don't like it, change it. Do better. Or you can't. Some of us can't. If you can't, just admit it. I can't do better. It's better for us to say, I, I, I can't. I don't know what to do. Then run around here pretend, huffing and puffing, because you can huff and, you, and puff or whatever, but you ain't going to blow no house down. Anybody can see. That's why these immigrants don't give a damn about you. That's why this white man don't care nothing about your happy ass. These Mexicans and all these other men, they don't trip on you. You're a used car. On your way to the junkyard. That's not Angel Snuffing Up 7 and 4. If I wasn't your friend, if I wasn't your brother, I wouldn't talk to you this way. But because I'm real, because I care and I want us to do better, and I know better, that's why I have to talk to us this way, so we can be better. Cuddling you, kissing your little hand, your little knee, and telling you these lies that you are God and a warrior when everybody know you're not. That's doing you a disservice. If I don't tell you the truth, I might as well be dead in the grave. I don't, I don't, there's no benefit for me being here. Just to, just to stroke your ego and tell you lies about yourself. Oh, you a warrior and you a god and, and you so smart and blah, blah, blah. You ain't built, you ain't built no damn pyramid. The only thing you do is talk about What's what somebody else did 5,000 years ago? Where your pyramid at? What do you build? When you, when you begin to build, when you begin to produce, you begin to understand that Angel Snub Number 7 did not tell you nothing wrong. I'm not going to tell you nothing wrong. When we act like men, when we act like fathers, like we're supposed to, these women... You're going to see a, brand, a whole different attitude from them because they want a man. And it's their nature to be attracted to a man, not to somebody that just view them as a sex toy or a maid. This is my partner. This is my equal. This is my love. This is my village. This is my family. And when she feel that protection and she feel that love, her whole attitude gonna change. You don't have to talk about weave. If she know that you don't like weave, she'll stop wearing it. If we as men, fathers, if she know we don't like makeup, she won't wear makeup no more because she want to please her man. She want to be with her protector. She want to make sure that we fed all right, taken care of all right, because we can't do our job if we sick. So she want to make sure we eat good and rest good and other things good. <laughs> it starts with you. It starts with the male gender. It starts with us. But you don't think that you have a problem. But clearly, we have a young man that talk about, I'm going to give my daughter to this man of God. Clearly, we have a problem. Clearly, we have a lot to work on. 
And I don't even want to bring up jealousy and envy. A lot of folks, the reason why they call Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign a pipe dream, it's not because they don't feel as though it won't work. It's because they're jealous it comes from Angel Snub Nub 7. If it came from Louis Farrakhan, if it came from somewhere that they like, they would embrace it. But it's coming from, hey, who the hell is Angel Snubbers? Who are you? How can you, you are nobody. How could a nobody come up with the solution? Well, you believe in God, right? I'll tell you. Deacon, should I tell them? Mellow, should I tell them? Audience Facebook, y'all, should I tell them? The reason why your God came to Angel Stubborn 7 because you said that God chooses whom he pleases. So God chose Angel Snuffed Up 7. And you should not question God's wisdom. Because you had years and years and years to get your act together and you have failed God. So why should Allah, why should Yahweh, Yahshua, Yah, whatever, why should this God continue to bless you and give you things and you are a failure. You making God look bad. Because God is not about talk. God is about production. God is about building. God is about bringing the dead to life. And you, after hundreds of years, you have continued to fail. So I'm going to Go and choose somebody else, an unknown person, because this person is worthy of the knowledge. A person not looking for booty, a person not looking for material gain, a person that grew up wanting better since I was a child. So I'm going to give you the solution. I'm going to give you the answer. And since you claim that you know God, you should recognize when God speak, no matter the vessel that it come through. But you don't know God. That's why you ignore Angel Snuff Nuff 7, because you don't know God. You don't know God in man. You don't know. Because if you knew, then you will be supporting the Mississippi campaign because it comes from your ancestors and you're not even connected to them either. All of what you talk about, you don't even... Believe yourself, it's all lies. It's all lies. The Mississippi campaign is the actions of our ancestors. The only thing I did was organize and put a name on it. That's all I did. I'm going by what they done. Because they would have been successful had it not been for domestic terrorism. And the reason why you don't know that, because you don't know your own damn black American history. Shout out to Juneteenth. Juneteenth. I can't pronounce that to right to save my life. <laughs> so we celebrate Juneteenth tomorrow. A federal holiday. Y'all haters. But what have you done? What do you do? You have a pocket piss in and you hate on other people. But they are accomplishing things. They have Juneteenth. Black Lives Matter have done their thing. And you run your damn mouth. What are you accomplishing? The only thing you do is sit around, I don't like Black Lives Matter. The, uh, lesbians did that. And they living in mansions. Your people live in mansions too. They take your money and, and buy fancy cars, do the same damn thing. You just hating 
hating on people. Tyler Perry, they hating on Tyler Perry. Because Bill Cosby supposed to bought NBC or, 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 or whatever, and they like Bill Cosby better because Tyler Perry is gay or, or whatever. He, he dressed up like a woman. Tyler Perry made a major move. He got BET and VH1. Y'all hating ass. More power to Tyler Perry. The, the hell with them haters. You do better, but you can't do better because you don't know what to do. The only thing you know how to do is talk. That's all you know how to do. Tyler Perry make moves. Black Lives Matter make moves. Those who fought for the Juneteenth holiday, they make moves. And don't be shocked that Malcolm X don't get a federal holiday. People making moves. The only thing you move is your bowels on your strict vegetarian diet. <laughs> so it was a hurtful thing for me. I don't want to talk about, as much as I love Elijah Muhammad, I, I don't want to talk about, see him in a bad light, but it is what it is. That was wrong. It's wrong. This young man on the earlier live thing trying to justify. Why he got to tell people? You're trying to justify. Making excuses for wrong. If I do wrong, you need to check me. Because it's a disservice to you. It's also a disservice to me. Because I can't get I can't get better doing bad. And then you giving me a pass, it's only gonna get worse. Like in the case of Elijah Muhammad. Power corrupts, money corrupts. All this praising, folks, it corrupts. And that's what happened. They believe their own hype. Then when you get ready to die, you run out in the rain. Allah, I don't understand. I don't understand. It's really a sad story. It's nothing to laugh about. Thousands of people are caught up, caught up in, in a cult. Not only the nation of Islam, but a lot of other stuff out here. Who knows how many women and children are being abused? How you know how many men? Like in the case of poor child, she's an abuser. She used religion to justify what she do. And she will abuse men. So it's not always women and children. You have women. That would do it also. But if we had a father, if the majority of us was fathers, we'll put a lot of this down. We don't have any fathers, y'all. You can get angry all you want to. You're a father. You are in the used car section of the auto dealership. We are called father. We are called warrior. How are you going to be a warrior and never fought in a war? With that, with that little fella from Home Alone? <laughs> That's what he do. You call yourself a warrior, never been, you've never been in a war to fight for yourself. You call yourself a god, and you don't have no power. You can't make nothing move except your bowel movements. <laughs> What's wrong with Angel Snuffin' Up 7? 
want to take us from the used car section at least to brand new. They actually have a problem getting angry and upset because I want better. We need we need better qualifications. Your criteria for man and father is real weak. And then you have the nerve to compare yourself with a lion. You ain't nothing like a lion. You're nothing like a lion. It's just talk. You've done nothing to show that you are like a lion. Absolutely nothing. And I'm not going to give you credit that you did not earn. I'm not going to praise you and you did not earn. I'm not going to do that. So you go to Nation of Islam and they can tell you how wonderful and brave and whatever that you are, you are God, or you can go to the Moor Science Temple and you can go to Tariq Nasheed and, and all these other suckers after they finish praising you, can you donate to my cash app? Can you help us build the nothing that we've been building for the last 50 years? You keep doing that. I'm not going to be part of it. If you believe in God, I'm telling you that God is speaking through me. But you really don't believe. If you believe you would be helping me, you would hear that voice of God. And some of these people have even told me that I'm a messenger, that I'm a prophet. But you still caught up in that crap. You still on that slave plantation that you won't answer God. There was a brother. I'm going to say this and we're going to get out of here. There was a brother here. And he came to the platform talking about the number 47. And I was honest with the brother. I never told him that I really understood where he was coming from because I don't do that. I'm not, we don't do the Bible prophecy, Quran prophecy, Elijah, uh, Adam and Eve. I, we, I don't do that here. He said he saw me as this third Elijah. I did not say that. And he came to this platform saying that. And we don't do that here, but we trying to understand. You know, we, you in the chat room and you listen to what he got to say. And you know, the 47, <laughs> 40, 47. And he want me to get on board with that. And so you don't see him no more. And he told me he's not interested in the Mississippi campaign. That really don't mean nothing to him. He want to, he want the reality of the temple to be more religious. Get more into the Bible. Let's challenge the Jews and Israel and all this other crazy stuff. But if I'm the third Elijah, if I'm the man that you claim, why aren't you heeding what I'm supposed to? Why aren't you listening to me? If I'm because these people make up crap and they really don't believe it themselves. Because I'm if I'm the third Elijah, I'm in prophecy, then why aren't you submitting to my guidance on what must be done? Because they have a delusion. And a hallucination and for some reason I fit into that hallucination and those delusions and so they come here because they do hear the voice of God but they don't want to do what God say because I'm not saying what they think God supposed to be telling them when do God answer 
answer to you? When do God submit to you? We are taught in religion. Don't question God. We are taught in religion that you, you are not on God's level. You can't comprehend the wisdom of God. So if I'm part of the prophecy, if you can feel and hear God coming from me, who are you to question my judgment? And so, so he took his happy 47 ass, 47 miles down the highway, traveling at 47, and he's gone. Caught up in religious garbage from foreigners. If it wasn't for translation, you couldn't read the Bible. You couldn't read the Quran. You couldn't read the hieroglyphics if it wasn't for, wasn't for translation. That stuff don't have nothing to do with you. You a Negro that was on a slave plantation. That stuff don't have nothing to do with you. None of those people are related to you. We just don't get it. Because we want to feel special. You are special. And that's why you, you was chose to be the world's most perfect slave. Because you have a slave mentality. You always want to follow. You always, always want to serve. You don't, you can't comprehend freedom. You can't comprehend what real liberation is. You can't comprehend it. Because you never lived it. And you don't believe in God. Because you would hear God talking right now. Just as well as any of your other preachers and pastors and pimps in the pulpit. You really don't believe. And you're not, I came unto my own and my own received me not. Those people aren't your own. Elijah Muhammad was taught by a foreigner. That's not your own. Noah Jolly got his crap from foreigners. Marcus Garvey was a foreigner. I'm the only one that can claim to be Christ. And I don't even claim it. But I come into my own and my own receive me not. I am you. I am a black American. I am the Negro or the color or the African American or those things that you talk about. I am all that. I am your own. And you receive me not. Telling us how to be father. How the hell are you going to have a problem with me? Talking about how we need to be better, stronger men. How the hell you gonna have a problem? You got a problem because you can't live up to it. That's why you have a problem. I know I was talking to Black Sun and I was talking to MD20 and I was telling them, you, you, you're not men. They got all upset. You're not. You're called men by default. That's the reality of it. And your thinking capabilities, you can regurgitate, but you can't think what the damn and you can't comprehend and you have no creativity, you have no vision. So when you go to Black Side Channel, it's a bunch of videos and garbage that they got from somebody else. And they regurgitating crap from somebody else's opinion. Nothing is original. Nothing coming from their loin, from their mind. How you gonna be a free and independent people and you can't even think worth a damn? You can't govern nobody. You can't govern yourself like that. That's why those African countries are having problems. They have no idea how to govern themselves. 
I heard some of them are asking the Europeans for help. And here they are in their countries with all the resources and Asians and Europeans and whoever is over in Africa just getting to all their diamonds, their oil, and blah, blah, blah. And you ain't getting nothing because you're not in a position to get nothing. If we had a state, we might be able to get some of that. I mean, the Afri I mean, why not? We supposed to be Africans too. We ain't getting none of it. Everybody getting stuff from the Africans except the Africans. And it's your fault because you're not a father. It's your fault because you're not a god. It's your fault because you're not a warrior. You're not willing to fight for nothing. Just sit on your ass and talk. And while you talking and it sound good, you got people steady coming across the border. And your situation going to get worse and worse and worse. Because those people can see, damn, ain't no father in their house. We can go. Come on, y'all. There's no lion at the door. It's open to anybody. So you can get angry at me all you want to. As long as I have breath in this body, I'm going to bring it real. I'm going to tell the truth. Because that's what we need. All this cuddling around and feeling good stories, that's over with. It's not going to get you nowhere. I know, because I've done it already. It didn't get us nowhere. And since you know the history, you know it ain't get us nowhere. You still want to try, still do that, still believe and still do the same redundant ass stuff that don't work because you have no father. Still following these old ass men that's getting ready to die, or these or these younger men following dead ass people, like how do you follow dead people? I follow the honorable Elijah Muhammad, he's dead. I follow Malcolm X, he's dead. I follow Marcus God, he's dead. How do you follow dead people? And then the ones that's alive, they are incompetent. Just because a person can talk, don't make them a leader. Just because Louis Farrakhan can run his mouth, don't make him a leader. He has no creativity. He has no vision. Still talking stuff from the 1960s, the 1930s. This is 2000. 23 people. Dr. Umar Johnson is talking about an African. What the hell is an African? There's 52 countries, over 50 countries in Africa. Who are you talking about? What you want to be, sir? Africa is a continent. There's no people called African. Who you want to be? A Ghanaian, Somalian, Congolese? Ethiopian, who the hell you want to be? They sending you down these paths to nowhere. And you get angry at me because I don't want you to get caught up. But the reality is some of us are losers. And some folks are content with being a loser. The Deacons put out another small video talking about winning because that's how we think here because we have, we are creative. We have the vision. We have the purpose. We have the solution. We got everything that we need to win. I know we can win. They don't talk about winning. 
because they are in a position to win, but they can't. They have thousands of dollars, thousands of supporters and followers willing to do the work and can't get nothing done. Why is that? Because when you win, you got to have a strategy. When, a, when you trying to win, you have to have a, a, a leader. You have to have a you have to have teamwork. All this jealousy and envy and uh, nobody have time for that. Because when I win, all of us win. But we don't think like that. I don't mind supporting the nation of Islam if we win it. I don't mind supporting the Moorish Science Temple if we win it. Or the SCLC or the New Black Panther. I don't care. I don't mind supporting anybody if we win it. You're not winning. Pretty speeches. Man, Tahaka Bay is a deep brother. Shout out to Tahaka Bay. You, you, you a deep brother, Tahaka. And you go home with nothing. You go home with nothing the first month, the second month, sixth month, eighth month, the whole year. You have nothing. You should be sick of it. You putting yourself in a bad, you putting your children in a bad spot. Because you have these immigrants coming across here every day by the thousands. Then you're going to wish that you had listened to God. And on that note, let me get out of here. <laughs> I thank you for listening. Jot down your comments, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, shout out to the Dickens of Reality, Mellow Cap, Armand Delight, Sister Ann, uh, Tafari Smith. Sean Davis, Brother Denzel, Brother Talib, um, who am I missing? Uh, Z Mad, uh, Razzy Fry, uh, Brother Phil Fox, of course. You know, I thank you so much. I thank, I thank Sister Tangi in California and her family. I thank um, our people in London, England, the resident, and just acting. I thank you, anybody, all of you, known, known and unknown who support this platform. Some of you have been with Angel Snuffin' Up 7 for years. I appreciate it. I thank you so much. I wish I could make, I wish I could actually do things and, and make some real moves. We don't have that kind of support. But when we get it, we're going to be winning. There's no excuse making. We have to win. Got to win. We have to produce. If I can't produce, I'm going to shut my channels down and shut up and go help somebody that can produce. No problem. Shout out to our Facebook audience. Shout out to Instagram. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we put in a lot of work today, so I don't know when we're going to be able to come and talk um, We'll see. Because as you know, nothing is, tomorrow is not promised. So if this is the last day, I enjoyed myself on this, on this earth. I enjoyed our conversation. And maybe in the future, somebody will take us, when they listen to these videos, they will take us to where we need to go. At this time, in this moment in time, it's, it's just not happening. And I also understand that all stories don't have a happy ending. I understand that the story of the American Negro, the African American, the Aboriginal, the Muslim, the Hebrew, whatever you want to call yourself, it's over. Because that's what you want. You want to go extinct. You want it to be over. And maybe that's a good thing. Your way of committing suicide. And maybe that's what you want, suicide. Oh, well, we had a good run, you know, 500 years. We had a good run. We're not the first person 
We're not the first people to, to go extinct and won't be the last. So on that note, drop down your comments, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Check out the description box and see what we got to offer. I appreciate it. Like our ancestor, Don Cornelius, used to always say as a parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. And we are Audi 5000.